Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. John Massey in Edmonton writes in, he says, McGilney? This isn't the hockey hall of pretty good players. Hot Somebody taste. save me because I'm on the cliff. It's Lindros got in, right? Yeah, oh yeah. So I'm like, oh, don't say, oh yeah, he's not that great. Theo's Theo's better. Like I'm at I'm at a point where if you if you get to put this guy in but not this guy, I'm I'm ready to walk away. Yeah. And not pay attention anymore. No, I know. And that's the Theo thing he should be. And I'm, I'm a Lindros fan, so I'm a little clouded you on You think it. he's Hall of Fame worthy? But I think he's Hall of Fame worthy. He redefined the power forward position and evolved it where it wasn't just somebody who was big and strong and, and opened up space. He combined it with high skill, like really high skill. And that was, you know, one of the, it was, it was transformational in that position. And we went through an era after Lindros of like really big men in that spot forwards taken over so I think he had a real big impact on the game and just didn't have a long enough career rack up all the points but um yeah the, I mean the Theo thing is just silly now it's just silly but I don't know that it'll ever change this will by, by, by the way you're going to want to be tuning into cat country and rock 98.5 Wednesday because that's going to be my commentary on that the Theo snub and everybody else that's been snubbed by halls of fame I've been snubbed but I don't care. It'll be a little advice for those who can't get over it. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. Why isn't Mike Vernon in the Hockey Hall of Fame yet? We could talk about this forever. Forever! Yeah, that guy had such a puck. It was a brawl. Uh, bench clearer, like a good one. Gary Lehman was bleeding from the nose, and he was bent over, skating to the bench. And Vernon skated up from behind. Didn't even see him coming. Reached from and blocked him right like that. Cool! Lights up. And I'm oh. like, yeah! This is the Rod Peterson Show! It certainly is. Hello, Canada and Canadian sports fans around the world. Welcome inside. Make yourselves comfortable. Uh, it is the RP Show, the number one rated daytime sports talk television show and entertainment in Canada. Did you know that? Making our way into the United States as well. As I say, hey, good morning, Jenna from Southern California. Speaking from my lips to your eyes. And we are live again at the Great Eagle uh, Convention Center, the event center here in beautiful Calgary, Alberta, as we bring in the Moose, Darren Moose DuPont. It's an interesting day, Moose. <laughs> you are in the shadows over there. Um, it's raining and cloudy. And as I was talking with the Great Eagle staff, as I was making the trek from our uh, side of the facility over here, they're like, how you doing? I said, I'm glad I'm inside today. Yeah. And she said, right. Uh, so, yeah, rain, and as what I said to you last night as we were coming back from the movie, which we're going to talk about in moments, the rain is always needed. I still have the farmer background in me. I think it's always needed, right? Yeah. It was getting a little dusty around here. Settle the dust. Always, yeah. And for the farmer, always a little rain and then a little sunshine is what you want. So we're in a little rain today, and it doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime. Yeah, soon. good day for sports talk. So cozy on up. And coming up, I was really excited when I saw the guest list today. I mean, I always am because it's my buds. But Farhan Lalji from TSN Vancouver and my favorite rough rider ever. For sure my favorite Canadian, uh, Jeff Fairholm. My favorite American rough rider ever is Don Narcisse. But Jeff Fairholm will be with us right here at the Gray Eagle. And he's kind of fashioning himself as a bit of an analyst, and he should. Two-time Grey Cup champion. Yeah. He can be our analyst, and he's my favorite rough rider ever. So that's coming up in Hour 2. Can you hit the uh, quick six show horn, please, Director Jordan? <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to get into this first. And, again, these are, the, these are the six topics that pertain of interest to me. Maybe not to the rest of the world. They're not the most excited, but... To me, they are. Number one is Elvis the movie. Moose and I went last night, because we say daytime sports and entertainment talk, but we don't talk nearly enough entertainment, probably as we should. Yeah. And so we went to one of our major partners is Landmark Cinemas all across Canada. So we went to Landmark Cinemas. We had great shows, great seats, and 
I'm an Elvis fan, basically because of my parents more than anything. Yeah. But I grew up, you couldn't grow up in the era that I did, 70s uh, and 80s, and not have Elvis just shoved in your face, especially the 70s. And I, I feel like I was a little bit more into it you, than you, but you still loved it. Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was great. I mean, I didn't grow up with Elvis, right? It was, it was done. Um, but you know who Elvis is. You know, I knew all the songs, right? Um, and just to hear that story, so many things he didn't realize is wild. I learned some things and I'm sure you learned a lot of things. Uh, and so, and the soundtrack wasn't just all those great Elvis hits, but there was like now hip hop and dance music combined with the Elvis hits in it. Right. So it was a 2022 soundtrack plus the sixties, fifties and sixties. Oh, it was so good. And the one thing where I can morph this with sports, Elvis, the movie, run, don't walk to your local landmark cinemas and go, was when he was walking at the International in Vegas to the stage, and he had all his band behind him and all his hangers on. I'm like, that looked like Nick Saban leaving, leading the Crimson Tide down the tunnel for the national championship. <laughs> I'm like, he's the man. And then I had friends, uh, some that were writing me during the show. Uh, one was Jack in Alberta because he'd seen it. And I said, now I know why they call him the king because he is the Freaking king. You knew he conducted himself right from day one. I mean, it was just wild the way he just owned the stage, did what he, like, he knew who he wanted to be. Even when everybody else told him that he couldn't and that he shouldn't, he knew exactly who he was. And yeah, So Elvis had that at the International. Basically. We don't have that here. Guys. <laughs> did they forget about us? Uh, I was hoping to get the lights on, and then uh, there's a train going through here. Anyways, Elvis the movie, go to it, starring Austin Butler, but the moose still prefers Top Gun Maverick. And again, that's like choosing between pizza and ice cream. Yes. They're both great. Just which do you like more? I mean, they're both showing now at Landmark Cinemas. Point two, the Toronto Blue Jays can sweep the Boston Red Sox uh, tonight when the American League East rivals wrap up. Thank you. The lights just came on. Wrap up a three-game series at Rogers Center. The Blue Jays erased a 5-4 deficit in the bottom of the ninth inning on Tuesday night as Vladdy hit a walk-off single to give Toronto a wild 6-5 victory. The Jays have owned the Red Sox this year. And I got to say this about Vladdy. The game is what it is. Very exciting in the ninth, but we were at the movie theater. It's not all about sports, right? Then I see the interviews with Vladdy, and I'm just putting this out there. Don't cancel me. But I'm thinking, how long has Vladdy been in the majors? Shouldn't he be speaking English by now? Now, let's have a discussion about this. Don't cancel me. Uh, maybe he doesn't want to speak English, but he had the interpreter there. I don't know if you saw Sports uh, Net Connect. That's the other thing. Yeah. Tennis is on. So I'm not watching TSN in the morning. I'm watching Sportsnet Connected, and it's all Blue Jays all the time, and that's totally fine. But uh, Vladdy said whatever the Spanish version of this is my home. Uh, Rogers Center, and it is his home, but he's speaking through a translator, and that's fine. I'm inclusive. I'm very much you do you. I say it every day, so maybe he doesn't have to. I just worry about the kids that say, I don't want to learn math because I want to do me. Doing the things that you don't want to do because you know it's what you should do, and if you're going to be in North American, connect with a North American fan base, the question is, should you learn to speak the language so that you can adapt and communicate with your fans? Um, if he can communicate through the translator and it works, I, I probably, it's probably going to be fine for him and he's, it's probably going to work. But, you know, it's a tough thing to learn another language. Um, We've done it, but as it, you know. But it would, there's no doubt it would help if he learned English. I guess he's at a point he's an adult man and you do you. Do you. I would just think if I was Major League Baseball, I would want my biggest stars being able to speak the language of the continent. That's all. Shohei Otani down in uh, Anaheim doesn't either. So it, is, it just struck me as I was watching it. Yeah. But again, I'm about inclusive, inclusivity. I'm about you do you. So, Val, Vladdy, you do you. Keep hitting bombs and nobody's really going to care. That's right? right. People are writing in with their questions. This is not taco time viewer takeover. We've got a lot of new viewers, and I appreciate you. But this is the segment of the show we call the warm-up, where Darren and I go through the, the uh, quick six show topics of the day. We'll get to your questions and comments later. Thanks for participating. So to point three, the Hockey Hall of Fame debate. Jordan pulled out a great clip at the start of the show 
where yesterday we talked about Alex McGillney and obviously we talked about Theo. And I only rant about, I'm, I'm good now. I think I'm down to like twice a year I rant about Theo, not in the hall. Okay. Used to be a lot more. Right. Yeah. So a guy sent me Jeremy Roenick's numbers versus Henrik Sedin, and I'm starting to get a little riled up. And I don't want to, like, listen, clearly you watch every day, you people, and you see that my horizons are getting very much expanded. And I'm not as interested about the things that I used to be. But I would still like to be excited about the Hall of Fame. But if I look at Jeremy Roenick, stick with me. And you too, son. As Colonel Parker said to Elvis, my boy. My boy. <laughs> you pay attention, my boy. Jeremy Roenick played 1,363 games. 1,363. He had 1,216 points. Henrik Sedin played 1,330 games. Almost identical. 1,330. Versus 1,070 points. Henrik Sedin wasn't even a a point-a-game guy. Nor was Jeremy Roenick, but Roenick's numbers are way better than Sedin's, and Sedin got in. Neither one has a Stanley Cup. Theo does, and Theo's an over-a-point-a-game guy. And throw in the Olympic gold and the World Men's Championships and the World Juniors, too. I'm starting to think... So it's not just Theo. JR's battling some sort of stigma or something. Yeah. Because JR should probably be in the Hockey Hall of Fame too. And I'm like, uh, so basically this, uh, I believe the guy's name was Brad that sent it to me. I don't know him, but I'm like, I'm kind of turning a little bit in my interest on the Hockey Hall of Fame then. If guys that should be in aren't in for whatever reason, ignorance, the stigma with Theo, or a grudge or ego, which I'm assuming is JR's, I'm not as interested as I used to be. How about that? You look at, you know, me growing up, the great American hockey players when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, Mike Richter, Brian Leach, Brett Hall, Tony Amane, and Jeremy Roenick. Those were the guys, right? And I'm pretty sure most of them are in or going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Mike Medano. Medano's part of that group, too. Believe me, he's not in the Hall of Fame because he is my favorite NHLer of all time. Yeah. And my cousin Christine in Medicine Hat, her dog's name Medano, just so you know. So, yeah. Hello, Jim Solajuk, watching from Winnipeg. Appreciate you. Uh, Pinks, uh, Todd Pinkney, was, I, I, had a t- I had a hot button here that I didn't even expect. Okay. Uh, Pink says, if you want to play in the LPGA Tour, you are required to speak English. And that's a fact, because I got to know the LPGA people at the CP Women's Open, and they told me that. And initially I thought, wow, that's not very inclusive. But the commissioner of the LPGA said, how do we promote our sport if the top stars can't even speak English? And he said, we just had to put this stipulation in because, frankly, all of the best golfers would be Asian because that, that they're all great. And if you speak English, you can be on the tour. So the LPGA can do it. Phil uh, Kershaw, watching the former chairman of the CFL, he says, He's watching in Victoria. He says, Vladdy speaks English. However, he's uncomfortable answering media questions in English. But yeah, you would think he would be more advanced in English by now. And I'm just throwing this out for discussion. I'm not sure that I'm even right. I'm rarely very right. Um, but on, with the Pats, you know, we had Europeans all the time. That's how I got to know the Russians and the Czechs and the Swedes. And, the, and our coaches would not let them speak in their language to each other. You know, if there's two Swedes in the back of the bus, I won't name that coach, but you know them all, but yeah. He's been up and visited us here, let's put it this way, at the Great Eagle. He would go to the back of the bus and go, English only. And that was the rule. Could you do that in 2022? Ooh, I don't know. Because what's the best way to learn the language? Speak. Speak it. Yeah. And if Vladdy's got other people that he can speak his native tongue with, he's going to speak his native tongue. Right? So why would you learn? It's a different era now. Right? You, the, you know, the Greeks. It's the Greek satellite channel and their restaurant because <laughs> they can. Yeah. The 60s and 70s, they weren't doing that. They had to assimilate. Well, and because and, you don't want to lose the culture. You don't want right? to lose the language. So you don't want to lose those kids um, Swedish or, or Czechoslovakian or whatever language they're speaking. But... I think it's, it is important to learn the language when you're a pro athlete like that because you're here, not only, you're not just here to play the game. We're not, you're not just an employee to play the game and punch a ticket. Part of what goes along with it is promoting the game, building yourself a career after baseball or after sports. And 
you got to be able to connect with the fans. You know, and and, God, and he is he's only going to go so far. Yeah, it'd be glad he's connecting with home runs. So it, well, it's not that big a deal. And obviously, I got what he meant through the interpreter. I just would have thought that it would have come a little further. Um, John Ohm in Winnipeg says, "Why Medano Rod, your favorite?" Because John, you watch the show every day. My dad worked for the NHL's Dallas Stars in Minnesota for 26 years. He retired as their longest-serving employee. That's why. And Mike Medano is the greatest player in franchise history. I love him. And that goes back to the PA Raider days. Now, you obviously forgot, John. I would think maybe he wasn't paying attention. So, hey, wonderful uh, discussion. Hey. Awesome. The Hall of Fame discussion and Vladdy speaking English or not speaking English. To point four, hockey talk, more of it. It'll be a dog fight for the Memorial Cup championship tonight as the St. John Sea Dogs, the host team, and the Hamilton Bulldogs are the last two teams standing for the Canadian Hockey League championship. That's junior hockey for my American friends that don't know. The Sea Dogs with an interim coach, Gardner McDougal, with a hairline sent straight from God. Gardner, Gardner McDougall of the St. John Sea Dogs up against the Hamilton Bulldogs, who have never been in the OH, have never been in the Memorial Cup final before. Yeah, and they were at the Memorial Cup in Regina when we were there, and great hockey team. Probably oh. deserved a little better fate then, but they've never been in the final. That's wild. I'm sending my energy to St. John, New Brunswick. Not that they need it. Can you imagine what that town will be going through right now with their host team in the Memor final tonight? And the people in Hamilton that have made the track or that are going to be watching on television their first time in a uh, Memorial Cup final. Folks, it's the last hockey game of the year tonight. We'll be watching on TSN. Uh, meanwhile, Canada's team, the Vegas Golden Knights, have announced three more additions to their coaching staff. John Stevens will serve as an assistant. Sean Burke will be a director of goaltending and goaltending coach. And Mike Rosati will be the manager of goaltending development and scouting. Would you mind, Moose, telling the viewers about running into Sean Burke on the golf course in uh, Scottsdale? I'll wait. <laughs> Just because he said hi to you, but coming across the, the driving range, in, and he's huge, and he's put his hand very big like, guy. Who is this monster waving me down? I'm like, did I do something wrong on the course? Was my etiquette? It's a private club I was at, right? But uh, he of course. came over and said hi and shook hands and said, how are things going? Why are you here? And, you know, make sure you say hi to Rod. Love the show and love coming on. So, John Burke watches the show in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, hopefully we get about that? another reason to cheer for the Vegas Golden Knights. Our NHL coverage is brought to you by Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, the preferred plumbing, heating and cooling company of the RP show. To schedule maintenance or to learn more about our services, call 306-781-2090 or visit us at broncoplumbing.com. We're going to take a break a little earlier than scheduled, come back with CFL Week 4, deal or no deal. I got some thoughts on Saudi Live Golf, man. Okay. They're saying now live and let live. It's getting ugly down there in Oregon ahead of this weekend's event on the Live Tour. And uh, our guest coming up, Farhan Lalji and Jeff Fairholm. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show. Your favorite daytime sports and entertainment talk show on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Does this look familiar? Your 
fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Cloudy day here in the foothills. Gray Eagle Resort and Casino, the place to be as the residency continues. Hey, listen, I, <laughs> we're talking about the movie Elvis, Elvis the movie last night, and you saw some similarities, right? Elvis staying on the top floor of the International in Vegas and us staying on the top floor of the Gray Eagle. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Was he needed cool. a little more security than us. Here, though. Yeah, he needed maximum security. I don't think I've seen anybody patrolling the outside of my door. I have yet to shoot the television yet. However, like Elvis did in Las Vegas at the International. However, if I see one more person say, you aren't in trouble until you lose a game at home. <laughs> Look out. Oh, no. Okay. Right. <laughs> By the way, I just opened up the text line, the 902-518-3033 text line, and there's no text there uh, so far on this show. Hello? Wakey, wakey, this thing on? Let us know you're watching from anywhere across Canada or those 31 U.S. states where we broadcast on Game Plus Television. We'd love to know what's on your mind today. Let's go. Yes, sir. As we move into point five, and that is the Canadian Football League week four. We do it every Wednesday. It's the poll question, and that is which is Canada's game of the week in the Canadian Football League. Our poll is brought to you by Capital Automall Universal Collision Center with dealerships all across the prairies, including Winnipeg, Regina, Calgary, and Edmonton. And from what I saw early on, and I have yet to tweet it, and that's my bad. Clark put it up on YouTube. Way to go, Clark. Leading the way. Here are your options, okay? Thursday, it's uh, BC at Ottawa. Friday, Edmonton at Hamilton. Saturday, Montreal at Saskatchewan. And Monday, Winnipeg at Toronto. And did I tell you what was leading? I feel like I did earlier on. Well, you, yeah. You said it would be BC. It was BC. Oh, it was BC. Yeah. The BC Lions at the Ottawa Red Blacks. Thursday night football is leading the way in the poll for Canada's game of the week. This Nathan Rourke is taking the world by storm. Just after we got off the air yesterday, Three Down Nation posted the ratings from last week. And the BC Lions, home to the Argos, i got to be honest with you, a Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern kickoff, was the highest rated game. 
in Canada on Canadian television. So I'm like, the, the, you were saying earlier, not everybody's like us, that That's we right. watch sports every night. And I have a tough time just getting my head around that because yeah. not only did I do it, my mom and dad did it, my brothers did it. Growing up, we all watch sports every night if yeah. we weren't out playing. But apparently not everybody's like that. Apparently not. You know, it's funny. They still call sports like a niche audience. I know. Which is wild. I don't know, because it's been my whole life, and it's largely been your whole life. But the point is, we in the sports business have all been trying to find that secret sauce to get you people tuned in. And Nathan Rourke is that secret sauce in Canada right now. Clearly. Yeah. The highest rated game, this Canadian quarterback. Um, so, yes. The BC Lions in Ottawa is the highest rated game. Do you want to play Deal or No Deal now? It's so much fun. I'm in. For Bet Regal, our exclusive betting partner, and I came up with this, although they do a pretty cool version of it here. Have you noticed Beat the Boss? Beat the Boss. They yeah, they the do cases. it here. At Grey Eagle, I, was, I randomly walked into the middle of it one night. Thank God they didn't ask me to play. <laughs> it's just like Howie Mandel, deal or no deal here, but it's called Beat the Boss. Would you like to play it? I would love Is to. that something you'd be interested I in? I would love to. I wouldn't. I would, people don't, don't understand. I'd be like, don't pick me, don't pick I was always that guy, don't pick me. I don't want people looking at me. I'm not, because I'm not big on like, you know, um, I don't know. I, I would like to host a game show. I think that would be cool. You'd be so good. I would love to host a game show. Because largely, it's scripted and you know where you're going. But then you can drop in little moments and have some fun with it. I would love to host a game show. If anybody's hiring. LFG. Yeah, buddy. Uh, hang on. To the, to the bat phone. <laughs> Arlen Bruce the third's watching an AB. I just love me some AB. Always have. Even though he never suited up for the green. Arlen says this is a high-end sports talk show, not a porn site. FYI. <laughs> you got a Rick Regan for that. Um, Jason and... Yeah. Jason and Red Deer. Good morning, sports fans and friends tuning in from a so far sunny Red Deer, Alberta. Just wait half an hour and it should be raining. LOL. Jack and Vulcan, Alberta. Rod, sorry for being late. Bit of a mishap this morning. As for Elvis, I loved it. And because I'm a little closer to the actual story, I can tell you it was mostly 100% accurate. Here. It was a little sad. Oh, it was actually a lot sad. Uh, cer certainly near the end. You got to go, man. You got to go. And go to Landmark Cinemas because you have a choice. But they're our, our exclusive cinema partner, our exclusive movie partner. Go see Elvis the movie. Uh, and I'll say Steve-O's channel is watching from Ontario, and I, he's been firing in a lot of questions here. And I'll just get to some. He says that the Nathan Rourke thing is good for the league. I'm sure the league won't do anything about this hype, but we'll see. Eh, too early to say this is, in a way, a tempest in a teapot. We're only into week four. Nathan Rourke's only played two games, but clearly Canada is paying attention. As we were saying earlier, we in the sports business are trying to find that magical secret sauce. You can't bottle it. You can't sell it, or else you would have. We would have years ago. What You don't know what the non-sports people are going to latch on to. They want a good story, and uh, that's going to make them watch. And clearly so far, it's Nathan Rourke. I think it's awesome. Yeah, but it to, is. To say he's the next Joe Montana is pump the brakes, okay? It's a little premature, but the longer this goes, the more excitement there, there will be and the more comparisons and, you know, wondering what the possibilities are for this kid. But he's got to keep it going. And uh, let's have close games, too. <laughs> Because I turned off the BC Toronto game the other night. It was a blowout. Yeah. Okay, we want close games. We want stars. We want Canadian stars. What else can we order up on the check <laughs> if it only worked that way? Well, you ordered pizza and passed it at the Grey Eagle Buffet, and it's on the menu. I don't know how to feel about that. I whined and complained to the people here at the Grey Eagle that I wanted pizza on the buffet, and now it's been on two straight nights. I'm starting to think maybe there's a little bit to this complaining business. Squeaky wheel. Gets the grease. Yeah. Not with us, it doesn't. I'll tell you that for free, but <clears throat> clearly with the chef here, it does. Yeah. By the way, Mike Abumeshrick the other day is celiac. I should tell you that, the former CFL lineman. The chef here at the Gray Eagle made him his own meal. I couldn't believe it. 
How the, the uh, hospitality. Amazing. Well, I shouldn't be surprised because Kevin Yates is the manager of Sutina Hospitality here, and they just have treated us so clearly. Hello. Right? They're just, come on in. Let us take care of you. Yeah. Then don't want to leave. That's how they've been taking care of us. Anyways, back on track. Nelson, our VP of Sim Events. He's been running simulations, and I find this very interesting. If you care for the betting, last week his simulations were 4 and O oh for CFL picks. He runs computer simulations. We've all heard about this. This isn't new, right? Everybody knows what that is. Yeah. Do you want to know what his results were for this week? Yeah. If you want to put some money down and you want to wager on these games, you might want to pay attention to Nelson's uh, wager. BC Lions will win at Ottawa 26-19. Oh, we haven't played Deal or No Deal yet. Well, maybe this will influence your, your uh, betting, okay? okay? He's got, no, the computer has the Hamilton Tiger Cats getting off the snide and beating the Edmonton Elks 24-18. Okay. Who do you think wins between Saskatchewan and Montreal based on computer simulations? Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah. 23-21. Okay. And then that game in Toronto, Winnipeg at the Argonauts. What do you think? Winnipeg. Yeah, 24 17. Oh, close. So that's the computer simulations from Nelson, our VP of simulations. But with Darren, we're going to play deal or no deal with the betting line put together by our exclusive betting partner of the Canadian Football League and ours, Bet Regal. Okay, here we go. So it's Thursday, BC at Ottawa. The Lions are favored by 2.5. Are you taking that bet? I'm taking it. He is. I'm not. I think Ottawa's going to win. Okay. Edmonton at Hamilton. As mentioned on Friday Night Football, the Ticats are favored by seven. Do the Ticats cover the spread? No deal. You're not taking the bait because you think Edmonton yeah. will win the football game. I do. I do. At least they'll keep it within a touchdown. But I think Edmonton might be due for their first win. Battle of winless teams. I'm going to take Hamilton to win the football game. Uh, Montreal at Saskatchewan on Saturday. The Rough Riders are favored by five at Mosaic Stadium. They lost big time in Montreal last week. Riders favored by five at home over Montreal. Deal or no deal? I'm going to go no deal. I'm going to take the Owls. Dun, dun, dun. Trevor Harris starting, by the way, which should surprise no one, but that news came out yesterday. I am taking the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to win and cover five points or more. And then on Monday, as mentioned, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers favored by five over the Toronto Argonauts at BMO Field in Toronto. Deal or no deal? I, you got a deal there. I'll take Winnipeg. All right. Done deal. You? I'm going to take it as well. Uh, yeah. Interestingly, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers might not lose a game. I'm not joking. Yeah, they're that good. That'll be, that'll be a fun story to follow, you know. How long can they keep this going and remain undefeated? Steve O's channel watching in Ontario says, they like you, Rod. Who's he referring to? I'm not sure. Maybe the chef at uh, the Grey Eagle Buffet? That would be one, yeah. That would be one place to start. <laughs> okay, here we go. 902-518-3033. Asking you shall receive. Kevin writes in, watching in St. Albert, Alberta. Thank you, Kevin, for chiming in. I appreciate that. The Calgary Stampeders, by the way, have the week off. They have a bye, uh, and they are 3-0. and So I wonder what they'll be getting up to, probably going out to the mountains and that kind of thing. Oh, I'm not even I'm sorry. I didn't get through all my topics, and I wanted to spend some time on this. By the way, our junior hockey coverage, and sadly the season ends tonight, but it's brought to you by Cavendish Farms, proud supporters of junior hockey in Canada. But with the draft coming up and free agency, there's still going to be lots of hockey talk and junior hockey talk. Our sixth and final point, Saudi-backed Live Golf is getting a chilly reception in Oregon. It's first stop in the United States. On Thursday, the series descends on Pumpkin Ridge Golf Club in tiny North Plains, west of Portland. We're carried out there on TDS Cable, by the way. We have a lot of viewers out there in Oregon, so be careful what you say. The North Plains mayor... Officials from surrounding cities and Oregon Senator Ron Wyden are speaking out against the tournament. Opponents point to Saudi Arabia's human rights abuses. There are concerns the event could bring major protests to town, to the town of just 3,400 people. Tickets to the event prohibit fans from displaying political signs. 
Did you see the news conference yesterday with Pat Perez, Brooks Kepka, Patrick Reed? I just saw some headlines. I didn't actually get to see the whole news I'm conference. sitting there going, this is disgusting what these reporters are being allowed to get away with asking these golfers this. The, the golfers were physically squirming in their seats. It was, uh, well, Brooks, at the, at the U.S. Open, you said you were against the Saudi tour, and now you're on it. What changed? He's like, my opinion. And the guy pushed him. He's like, I'm allowed to change my opinion, right? Yeah. And then uh, the other guy says to Pat Perez, well, how do you feel about the human rights atrocities committed by the Saudi government? And Pat goes, I'm here to play golf. <laughs> you know, and then the next reporter, have you guys been coached? Well, public relations on how to answer these questions? And Kepka's like, nope, unless you want to train me. <laughs> Kepka's awesome, man. I'm starting to become more of a fan of this. So I don't know how far I want to go down the road on this. I mean, I have thoughts. I really have thoughts about the Saudi government and backing this. The one thing I will say is any sports backing, if you knew the infusion of mob money into a sports team, I'm not going to name any, but let's say your team was funded by organized crime. How do you feel to take the ice uh, as a product of the avails of prostitution and drug dealing? I'm just here to play hockey, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is the, not the guy who asked me to play for the team is not with the mob or the blah, 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 blah. Greg Norman's the guy asking these players to come play golf. So, you know, yeah, there's, it is overhanging, though. The, the one thing with this, as opposed to, you know, your local sports team that might be funded by some dirty money, is it's well known that this is funded by the Saudis. So at least they know going in, but... There's those degrees of separation, right? They're not promoting yeah. that. They're trying to create this competition. And they're trying to improve the PGA Tour at the same time. I feel like we got to get into this next hour, okay? Because you got thoughts. And maybe Farhan has some. He'll join us next. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. 
A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. you got to be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, check it out. You see that screen? Some of the great acts coming to the Grey Eagle Event Center here in Calgary. Nazareth, the special guest ahead pins August 12th. Dancing Queen, a tribute to Ebba. August 13th, the Bare Naked Ladies. August 20th, Terry Fader, the winner of America's Got Talent, coming September 16th. Tracy Morgan, the comedian, and his No Disrespect to her September 29th. Go to Grey Eagle Resort and Casino.ca to see the complete list and buy your tickets. Well, obviously, we want to talk CFL, and we will with TSN's Farhan Lalji, who joins us from Vancouver. But, Farhan, if you saw the end of the last segment where we were talking live golf, please tell me you're going to Oregon this weekend to cover the big event down there. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. I got lots of other things to do up here on the West Coast, but I'm not going to make it all the way down to Oregon. I will get to the Oregon Coast later this summer, though. I'm pretty excited about going down, but will not see the tournament, my friend. Is there some buzz about that uh, on the West Coast about what's going to go down, go on down there in in Oregon? Not necessarily. I mean, you know, I, uh, I follow a couple of people that um, are, are fairly prominent writers in the the Portland and Oregon areas, and. You know, as everything with this tour, it's pretty polarizing, right? I mean, there's a lot of people in that area who believe the tournament shouldn't be taking place or the course itself shouldn't be supporting it and allowing them there. And then, you know, as more and more PGA players wind up joining this tour, it becomes less and less of an issue, which is, you know, kind of, I think, what they were looking for to begin with, right? So um, it, it's still it's still somewhat polarizing. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some, you know, minor protest, obviously, this isn't necessarily a political event. It's a sporting event, but it certainly could get used in either direction. So um, a lot of, you know, a lot of heat around the topic when it first got announced a couple of months ago, but a little less so now. I know you didn't come on to talk about that. But our viewers have just latched on to it. We'll save that for viewer takeover yeah. next segment. We obviously brought you on to talk about the Canadian Football League. Is it uh, 10 p.m. Eastern kickoff last week? Lions and Argos was the highest rated on TSN, and you were part of it. I watched it surprising at all that the lions uh, were number one and we, we all know why yeah look i think there's a lot of curiosity around nathan rourke and just what the kid's all about right and as i've said to nathan and, and the people across the country i think he's going to be everybody's second favorite quarterback right uh you know in saskatchewan they're going to love cody Fajardo, but the next guy that they're cheering for is going to be nathan rourke and i think that's a common theme around the country and you know, with the Argos, I always say there's a lot of Argo fans. There's just not a lot of people willing to say and admit that they're Argo fans. So, uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't surprise me that people are watching. Of course, he was raised in Oakville. So uh, a lot of interest around him, and I think that's going to continue. I'm curious to see what Thursday's ratings are because generally the Red Blacks aren't a very hot ticket as far as television is concerned. But again, I mean, I think people are going to want to uh, catch Rourke mania right now because it's in full effect. And for our American viewers, uh, they're tuned in, I think, for the football coverage. They probably know that Nathan Rourke is this Canadian stud quarterback for the BC Lions that played at Ohio. Um, you were the one talking about the NFL interest in Nathan. Tell us something about him that the average fan wouldn't know. They're just getting to know Nathan Rourke. What's, what's his deal, Nathan, Farhan? Nathan Rourke still lives at home with his parents. And, and I'm, that's, that's, you know, that's Nathan, right? I mean, it's... It's who he is. He is a he is a very focused, determined young man, and he and he is young, right? I mean, you don't see a lot of quarterbacks in this league playing at twenty four, right? I mean, Bo Levi Mitchell did a little bit at a fairly young age, but usually, what happens before they come to Canada is they spend time at a number of NFL camps, right? And 
And even in the case of a guy like Cody, who came up here relatively early, uh, he spent a number of years at varying uh, CFL teams, including Toronto, including BC, and, you know, and kind of learning the game, learning the league before he gets an opportunity to play, right? So the fact that Nathan came up here right out of college, uh, was able to play a little bit in his first year and prepare and get ready for it. But, you know, the, the biggest thing with Nathan is is just the work ethic. And people will say, well, they're all like that. You know, all quarterbacks are like that. No, no. All great quarterbacks are like that, right? Just uh, guys that just spend that much time in the building, truly build a rapport with their teammates, have a, a complete, huge understanding of the offense and what the defenses are trying to do around them. But, you know, he's just – he's a young, humble kid who still lives at home. And, and I think there's a, a, a much longer story to be told as we get through his career here because I think he's got a lot of good football ahead of him. Well, isn't that – Nice. It's like milk and cookies, Sidney Crosby type uh, personality. With yeah. it. Ted in Red Deer says, by the way, Farhan is a great insider, tons of football and hockey knowledge. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt about that. But the one thing about Nathan, we've had him on this show. I've been around him a little bit. He reminds me of a Ricky Ray, Dave Dickinson. Those guys are Hall of Famers. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. But he's not going to be, I don't think, cracking jokes. He's pretty stern. He's kind of ice through his veins guy. You're not going to probably hire him to speak at your banquet because he's not going to have them rolling in the aisles. He's very focused, right, and just a very even, sort of a Joe Burrow type, if I may. You and I were both at Super Bowl. That's the kind of guy you want as your quarterback. Yeah, you know, and I think as he gets older and gets more comfortable, you know, with the limelight, I think you might see a little bit more of his personality coming out. But generally, he's pretty serious, you know, in terms of just the passion he's got for his craft. And it's funny because I've compared him and Michael O'Connor. Michael O'Connor is serious, right? Um, whereas, hmm. you know, I, I think uh, I think Nate is not necessarily funny, ha ha, but he, you know, he does smile and laugh a lot and. Um, you know, is, is a fairly easygoing young man and doesn't take himself too seriously, but certainly takes his work very, very seriously. Let me ask you this as we are on the eve of week four kickoff and it's BC at Ottawa week four in the CFL. What are the other storylines that have you intrigued in the CFL so far this season? Well, there's a lot of teams that we're still trying to figure out. I mean, obviously what's happened in Montreal where they've changed quarterbacks uh, and it's not a week-to-week change, right? Like, this is a legitimate change. It's now Trevor Harris's ball to run with. I think uh, that was it was a big one for me, just um, how quickly that change was made in the second quarter of the second game, and it looks like it's going to continue for a while. Um, you know, who are the Hamilton Tiger Cats, right? Nobody expected to see them at 0-3. Uh, the offensive line is terrible right now. Now, it's, a lot of that is injury-related, and they're going to get a Revenberg back this week. They'll, they'll have Colin Kelly in their lineup, so they'll be a little more experienced and you know, maybe that can stabilize things. And, you know, I, I'm not sure I expected Edmonton to be as bad as they've been, right? I mean, I, I know that they uh, were a little bit more competitive in the last game, but generally I didn't expect them to struggle this much coming out of the gate. So there's a few storylines around that. You know, how does Saskatchewan rebound from losing uh, some key weapons on the offensive side of the ball? First of all, Kyron Moore before the season started, but now Shaq Evans, right, and, and a difficult outing for Cody Fajardo and the Riders in the last one. So we'll see how they rebound. but. Uh, more than anything, I, I think just, you know, the Nathan Rourke story is a big one, but but also Montreal and Hamilton, just kind of seeing where they're at so far with the quarterback situation in Montreal and just the 0-3 record in Hamilton. Yeah, overall, I think a pretty good start to the season and some pretty good games, although mm-hmm. you've had some blowouts there under the orange top. Uh, and lastly, in 90 seconds, what is your Vancouver Canucks update as we get ready for the NHL draft in Montreal? Well, no real update yet. I mean, you know, I, I think the first order of business for them is to kind of get some contract situations sorted out with both Brock Besser and JT Miller. If they can do that, that gives them some clarity, both going into the draft and then free agency on the 13th. So um, two complicated situations, uh, big money due JT Miller's way, a big qualifying offer for Brock Besser. They're going to have to navigate that to decide how they're going to approach those other two benchmark dates in July. All right. Sounds good, man. We're watching everything you do. Great work. Hope you're uh, having fun. It seems like you are. And uh, enjoy the summer. Thanks, Rod. Always good talking to you. TSN's Farhan Lalji joining us from Vancouver. When we come back, a Taco Time viewer takeover. We'll get to all of your thoughts on today's uh, six-topic sports menu. It's a busy one. And coming up in Hour 2, Hall of Famer Jeff Fairholm. Great Cup winner with both the Argonauts and the Rough Riders. He's got a lot of hot takes and everything going on. We'll be right back. You're watching on Game Plus TV. You can always catch the podcast, too, wherever you enjoy your podcasts, including Amazon, Google, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. 
Have you subscribed to The Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. The a legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop, staffed by PGA of Canada professionals, is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tea time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. It's taco time. Viewer takeover here. Live from Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. As you see the uh, skies at least opening up a little bit. We're seeing some sunshine here. And I appreciate the people that have picked up the phone and texted me. And I'm going to get to the uh, sports update in a moment. I hope there's a lot of comments that have come in. Thank you. Watching on Game Plus Television. Dave Mason writes, I'm listening from Kate Breton by way of Hamilton. Hoping for a Bulldogs win tonight was at Hamilton's last Memorial Cup win in 1976. Finn Cup over the New Westminster Bruins. Just a toddler for the 1962 Memorial Cup win for our Red Wings. RP show, best daytime show around. Can we get him something? How about He's that? watching from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. But here's, oh man, this really mind screwed me. Somewhere I saw that the Hamilton Bulldogs franchise, this is their first Memorial Cup final, and we got Dave saying Hamilton's last Memorial Cup win was 1976. To quote my dad, can we get a ruling on this? 
It's one thing to be the same city. It's another to be the same franchise. And if this isn't Hamilton's first ever appearance in the Memorial Cup final, I'll still be watching and I'll still be pulling for them, but I won't be losing sleep over it. Thank you, Dave, for pointing that out. And thank you for watching in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia on Game Plus Television. How about that? How Jeff about Caldwell that? writes in. He is watching in Redmond, Oregon, and he says, interesting that Live Golf would choose Portland, known for their liberal protests, as their first U.S. event. I know, right? I was thinking kind of the same thing. Why would they choose this town of 3,400 people overall, this Saudi-backed Live Golf League? And we're all going to be watching. DG in Saskatoon watching says, morning, guys. I'll just jump in with the Live Golf discussion with an ESPN report from May 19th, which uncovered that NBA owners have over $10 billion tied to Chinese business and businesses linked to the Chinese Communist Party. That doesn't even include Nike's Phil Knight and his offer to buy the Portland Trailblazers. Did Nike have any factories in China? I don't remember. Simply, no money in pro sports is pristine, clean anywhere. That's what I was getting to. If we knew what was behind some of these huge entities that are funding sports, we wouldn't even play the games. And that's why I'm with the golfers I'm more and more and more every day. If I was running that live golf tour and these reporters were asking those asinized questions at the news conference, I would pick them up and throw them out the door. You want to ask questions about golf? Let's go. You want to talk political stuff and make these guys feel bad? There's the door. No other league would allow the media to do that. Brady in Saskatoon says, hey, Rod, Rattlers were on a three-game winning streak coming off a win right last on. night against the Newfoundland Growlers. I told you it was guaranteed win night. He says, I like Sask versus Montreal as the CFL game of the week. Will the Riders seek redemption and fix their penalty issues, or will they come out slow and unorganized? Nathan Rourke is an amazing quarterback and will take the Lions to great heights. Here he is. But thank you, Brady. And by the way, I, I'll jump into a sports update here. The Saskatchewan Rattlers started and ended the game hot as they defeated the Newfoundland Growlers 90-71 in CEBL action in Saskatoon last night. The game was close midway through the third quarter, but the Rattlers went on a run to lead by 22 points at one point. They won their third game in a row. They're 6-4. and four. The Growlers now 0-9 expansion team. They're really growling. With a win tonight, the Blue Jays can sweep the American League East rivals following a wild 6-5 win over Boston last night. Blue Jays ace Alec Manoa slated to pitch today's finale against Canadian Nick Pavetta of Victoria, B.C. for Boston. Toronto opens a four-day, five-game Canada Day weekend series at home against the Tampa Bay Rays on Thursday. Two Canadian soccer squads are in action tonight as Major League Soccer rolls out a seven-game hump day schedule. CF Montreal is heading west, hoping to rise in the east. Montreal plays the Sounders in Seattle, looking for a win to move into a tie for top spot in the Eastern Conference. The Toronto FC Reds will host the Columbus Crew at BMO Field. This sports update for Ballers Rec Room, your official home of Slow Pitch, open Wednesday to Sunday for the Tab Brewhouse and drive Through Liquor Store. And for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. And actually a brand new, very exciting sponsor next week. Last minute of play in hour one. Last minute of play. A very exciting and brand new sponsor starting next week with us. Stay tuned for that. Nice work by our sales crew. You got to love it when a plan comes together. Next hour, yeah, my favorite Rough Rider ever, but a two-time Grey Cup champion, a Hall of Famer. Jeff Fairholm is going to be with us here. He won a Grey Cup with the Argos and the Rough Riders, 97 and 89. So we'll be talking CFL stuff. We'll be talking probably some NFL stuff. For sure, golf. Jeff's a major golfer. We'll get into the Deshaun Watson thing because we're still waiting on the fate. We should know by the end of the day if we haven't... Already, by now, a decision being handed down on the suspension for Deshaun Watson. Cleveland's quarterback supposed to come down today. Stick around. Hour two coming up after this break here on Game Plus TV. How about that? Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Four. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? 
Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG. Always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. squad now you can join the team with your very own rp show gear head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last it's just like we wear on the show official rp show gear at rodpetersonshop.com universal collision center is saskatchewan's premier auto body shop our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every ucc customer experience is an easy one we're certified to repair all makes all models and all luxury brands and universal auto spa offers full service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle plus we're the official body shop of your saskatchewan rough riders universal collision center 3910 rochdale boulevard and 2355 first avenue in regina Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. you got to be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Why isn't Mike Vernon in the Hockey Hall of Fame yet? We could talk about this forever. Forever! Yeah, that guy had shit spot. It was a brawl. Uh, bench clearer, like a good one. Gary Lehman was bleeding from the nose, and he was bent over skating to the bench. And Vernon skated up from behind, didn't even see him coming, reached from and blocked him right like that. Cool! Lights up. And I'm oh. like, yeah! This is the Rod Peterson Show! Hello, Canada. Welcome to the RP Show and our U.S. viewers. Welcome to the program. We're coming to you live from Great Eagle Resort and Casino here uh, the beautiful Sutina Nation. We're in the events and all the shows go down. And what an interesting day it's been so far. We got a lot of talk that I think is going to suit our next guest. Jeff Fairholm joins us, uh, as I'll say again, my favorite all-time rough rider. For sure, Canadian. Don Narcisse checks in as my favorite American. Did I ever tell you that? You never told me that. (laughs) Sorry. I seem to have taken a step down. (laughs) No, no. Favorite Canadian, favorite writer, (laughs) American. Uh, Don Narcisse stumbled across this show the other day. I got to show you the video. He was flipping channels, Fairway, in Houston, Texas. And he's, you know how he talks. Right. What you doing on this channel? Send me the video of it on Bounce TV in Houston. So hello, Houston. 
They love the football talk down there, and I want to get all your hot takes. Jeff has several. He played with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders from 88 to 93, and then the Toronto Argonauts from 80, 94 to 96, won two Grey Cups, a CFL All-Star, won the Jackie Parker Trophy, the Dr. B.D. Martin Trophy, and that's why he's in the Hall of Fame, went in in 2005. Before we get to week four kicking off in the CFL and all the other topics, you've got the hot takes, as I said. Live golf. Oh, I love that topic. <laughs> no, teeing off in Oregon uh, tomorrow. Did you see any of the coverage of the media event yesterday? No, I did not. The par- poor golfers just getting ripped by the reporters. Yeah. And I'm like, Pat Perez finally said, I'm here to play golf. You know, and Brooks Kepka was, you know, he's not shy of, of opinions. And our viewers have chimed in with a lot of comments too. And before I turn you loose on them or vice versa, whose side are you on? I feel for both sides. I really, this is an opinion, you know how opinionated I am. This yes. is one that I <laughs> don't have a side. I, it's a business thing. I get it. You know how loyal I am too. So I'm really torn. I think I would lean towards the side of staying with the PGA and not, wow. not, not liking the whole live golf thing. These guys have made enough money. I don't think it's for the money. If it is bad on them, I'd say. I'm not real crazy about the whole Saudi thing and, and what's going on there. But I think I'm going to lean on the PGA side and stick with them. Intr- I did not expect that. I thought you'd be pro player all the way. No, I'm not in this case. Uh, you know, as, I'm, as I'm thinking about it and talking it through in my mind, I think I'm more on the PGA side. And if you look at some of the guys, most of the guys that have gone over there, they're not my favorites either. So that might put me on the PGA side. Like I'm not a fan of DeChambeau and Reed and even Kepka. So, yeah, I think I'll lean on the PGA side. Well, we have military people watching. My friend Don from the Navy writes in and he says, take the money, boys, but don't claim any moral high ground. As a result, you've sold out the money. So accept the criticism Uh, from Enterprise Sports. Dan, the situation, tuning in from Philly. Thank you, Dan, for tuning in. And we'll... I guess I could say we get to the more mainstream sports talk, but to be honest, I don't know if it's because I'm in Calgary as opposed to the rectangle where all they talk about is the football team. I feel like everywhere I go here, this live tour thing's being talked about. Well, it's going to be, it's going to yeah. be talked about, and I think there's going to be some more defections from the PGA Tour. Uh, you know, Mickelson, I'm not a fan of his either. I forgot to mention him. But, it, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a hot topic. It's very polarizing. You know, it's almost like having Trump in, Trump in office again. Not quite as bad, but, you know, that live golf and, and uh, PGA Tour, it's a hot topic for sure. Jason in Red Deer. How about this? Jason in Red Deer. Hey, Jeff, my all-time favorite rider. Uh, <laughs> highlight is the long bomb tipped out of the air by you and then sprint to the end zone in the 89 Grey Cup. That's well, kind of my favorite, too. <laughs> no kidding. Wasn't that awesome, though? Yeah, that was. <laughs> I, was I still see that on the highlights. Uh, you must still see it on the highlights. I don't know where I see it. We're so inundated with yeah. footage and coverage these days. I'm not on, I'm not on too much social media other than like, Twitter. Uh, I'm, I'm getting kind of, kind of busy on Twitter now, and some people will post some things like that. So I see it once in a while. Um, I've got it saved on my, on my hard drive just in case I... I fall off a cliff and people don't know what's going on right what is it slot back 18 is your twitter by the way if yeah, yes it is slot back 18 because he's throwing out a lot of hot takes and what's going on with the cfl and uh we will get to that oh there you go yeah I'll, you know i'll turn his mic up too. yeah uh yeah well, i could sit and talk with this guy all day and before we do get to the cfl stuff Jeff was in that celebrity golf classic last monday a week ago monday at bears paw golf club and it was quite a you seem humbled by the field of the celebrities you were involved in there. Well, I got a kick out of that. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm 56 years old. I haven't played football in so long, and I never considered myself a celebrity anyway. And, you know, being around Jordan Eberle and Lanny McDonald and, you know, uh, Theo, Theo Fleury, I can't yep. say his name, Theo Fleury, it, uh, you know, it was humbling. It's kind of fun to be around these guys who I watch play. Bo Levi? Oh, yeah, Bo Levi was there, too. I did say hi to him, too, What's, yeah. Did you? Because he wouldn't say hi to me. Uh, what do you mean? Of I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I've met Bo a few times and uh, yeah, I mean, we chat, no big deal. Oh, I appreciate you helping out Bears Paw and I know they do and uh, Sheldon from here at the Grey Cup, or Grey Cup, Grey Eagle. As it turns out, Jeff's his favorite rider player too. You know, wow. it's funny when I leave, didn't he tell you that? 
I don't think so. When I left that tiny town of 640 people, Milestone, Saskatchewan, my heart was broken. I'm like, he's my Jeff Fairholm. There's other people that love this guy? <laughs> I'm like, George Strait. There's, he's my George Strait. Other people love George Strait? Yeah, so there's a big world out there to, waiting to discover. But we still very closely follow the CFL. And i got to be honest, Jeff, as we head into week four, we played Deal or No Deal last hour with Darren. It's where we do the betting lines for Bet Regal of all the games. Um, You've been a little critical of Saskatchewan. Would I be fair in saying that? Have I been? Um, well, I was. I, there wasn't a lot good to say about the last game, as you know. Um, they're two and one. I think they're a good team. I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've been that critical. I hopefully I'm saying some positive things too. No, no, no. Well, the here's what I see, and I do enjoy watching the games, and specific specifically if I'm alone, just surfing Twitter and seeing what people are saying. And the game in Edmonton, which I think was 26-16 riders, I thought it was you, maybe it was somebody else saying, they're letting Edmonton hang around too close in this game. Oh, for sure. Yeah, well, that's a fact. Um, they did let them hang around. And, and, you know, after Edmonton came off of their blowout loss to BC, I was expecting Saskatchewan to go in there and blow them out. And I was a little disappointed to see how um, uh, Jones was able to stymie our offense a little bit because um you know he came into the three man three man rush most of the time and dropping a lot you know nine guys and i think it i think it confused cody a bit and obviously they made some adjustments at halftime and came out and won the game which is great but it was a lot closer than i thought which is good for the cfl so yeah the games for the most part have been good it's funny we had farhan on last week and the ones that he's been a part of in Vancouver, 44-3, to the Lions beat the Argos. And then the week before, 59-19, to yeah. uh, they, they have, uh, BC beats the Edmonton Elks. But I'm still entertained, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> me too. Even in a blowout, I'm entertained. I mean, I see, I see things that I like to see. Like, I see the game a little bit differently than maybe the average fan does. And, I, you know, I, I, there's always stuff to see. I mean, even the first part of that Saskatchewan-Hamilton game, the first half or first two and a half quarters was all defense. And I was fine with that. I mean, I, there was some great plays happening and these, these guys are world-class athletes that people don't, people don't understand that people give them a, you know, a bit of a black eye because they, you know, maybe they're not in the NFL, but these guys are world-class athletes and this is a world-class game. And it's, uh, it's exciting to watch and, you know, watching Rourke play, I think that's, you know, that's been the talk of the CFL this year. And, and seeing a Canadian have success like that, a quarterback, is really exciting for me. I was actually going to get around to that. Um, Jeff was, is a Canadian. You're still alive. <laughs> Last I checked. Uh, but played at Arizona. And that's the, you always have the interesting takes with me. I mean, I've been in the league. I started covering it in 91, full-time play-by-play in 99. The term Canadian quarterback was like a swear. It wasn't celebrated. And all of a sudden, here it is. How did this change? He's good enough to play. I mean, that's one thing. And, and a, lot of, a lot of the coaches are American coaches, too. So they might slight the Canadians a little bit. Maybe they don't give them a chance. Uh, when Justanis was in Toronto when I was there as a coach, they didn't give him a chance. I mean, maybe he wasn't good enough. I get it. We watched him, but you should have heard what was being said behind closed doors and, you know, about a Canadian and things like that. And I really got my back up, which is one of the re main reasons why I got out of, out of the coaching ranks. But Rourke is good enough. I mean, I've heard uh, on Twitter, I had a little little chat with somebody where, <laughs> where they said, you know, well, yeah, but he was in the States. Yeah, so he's trained in the States. It doesn't mean he wasn't born in Canada. He's actually from Oakville, where I went to high school. And I went down to the States. I'm no less Canadian than, you know, Dave Sapunjas. So I'll use that, that name that just came to mind, who, who went to school at Western and played in the CFL. We're all Canadians and celebrated. I mean, the guy's a Canadian. I'm happy for him. There might be something a little deeper to this now that listening to you talk. My niece was a freshman uh, at Mercyhurst College hockey player last year, and she was first-team All-Star, also All-American. I say scholastic. They say academic, mm -hmm. All-American academic. Does it say something about the development of our athletes in Canada that they need to go to the States? It might, uh, but I think it's getting better. Certainly when I went to school, uh, you know, the coaching in the university ranks was not nearly as good as the States. And so that's why I went. Um, I think it's changing, though. I mean, there's still a ton of Canadians that play here that, you know, there's, there's a lot of Americans that come up and can't beat the Canadians out. Ratio be damned. And... 
you know, I think that the coaching is getting a lot better in Canada and certainly has over the years. I mean, look at the University of Saskatchewan and Western and, you know, there's some there's some great coaching going on there. And, uh, you know, the, the, the players are getting that coaching. On the other side, the competition is better in the States. So you play up to your competition. So I was able to play against some some names that, that some people might remember. And you know, that just made me better. And I was able to practice against those, those, those players as well. So it just makes you a better player as you become, it's not just the coaching, it's the competition as well. Well, you know, what's fantastic about this discussion is um, <laughs> just yesterday, Tim Hunter sat in that chair, Stanley Cup champion with the Flames, and we had a great 80s hockey talk. And now when I think about you playing at Arizona, I, th- I think I told you that Chris Schultz and I were very close friends. Southern Ontario guy, Burlington, mm-hmm. and he played at Arizona too. He did. did. you guys ever play together? No, he's older than I am, yeah. or was older than I am. Yeah. Not a lot older, though. Not too much. I played with Chris in Toronto for a year. Uh, he went to Dallas after he was at Arizona. And, uh, yeah, there's actually quite a few Arizona players that have, that have come up through the ranks. What was the pipeline there? Is that by luck, or um, was I, there other Canadian kids? Um, from yeah, Florida, Ontario going to Arizona. I think. Well, uh, mine was completely different. My high school football coach married a girl whose father was the ex athletic director at Arizona. So <laughs> back then, you had to have you had to have a way there. I'm not sure how Chris got there. Uh, my dad actually went to Arizona out of Montreal, and at that time, Larry, Larry, uh, and that was back in 1961, 6061, and the Alouettes, who he eventually played for, actually got him there. So I think everybody has a different path. Um, these days, they're recruiting all over the world. I mean, you're seeing kickers from Australia and, and things like that, and offensive linemen and from everywhere. So, you know, they're recruiting all over the world, And um, but, but back then, I don't think there was a true pipeline. I think everyone had their own path. Mm couple minutes left in this segment, and I'll turn it over to the viewers' next segment with Jeff. But I, I'm, uh, I'm fascinated with the Nathan Work thing. I am the guy saying pump the brakes on the NFL talk. I'm really saying that. And I just don't want to get people's hopes up or even the kids. Just go week by week by week. You understand that? But I can't quite figure out. I've lived in Canada half a century, Jeff. <clears throat> Why now? We had Brandon Bridge. He wasn't shattering ratings. What is it about Nathan Rourke that... Canadians are so excited. I love it. But what's changed? Um, I think, well, he's, he's better. He's, he's, a, he's a better quarterback than, than I think Bridge was. Um, he's had some great coaching. He's in a terrific system. You know, that's the other thing. He's got some great receivers. He's, he's being protected. Um, he's a smart kid. He's got a defense that gets him the ball. So it's a team game, as you know, Rod. And, you know, the quarterback doesn't do it himself. He's being protected. He's getting the ball out of his hands. He's got some great coaching. It's a perfect fit. It's kind of like when I was in Saskatchewan. I had a great fit. You get a little lucky with the quarterback you have and the system and the coaches. And then I went to Toronto, and, you know, the system wasn't quite right for me and things like that. And, you know, I needed to play in a system that, that, that fit my style. And, you know, having Flutie, even for that half year that I played in 96 before I got hurt, He's drawing stuff up in the dirt, which didn't jive with me. I needed to know where I'm Is going. Is that right, hey? Oh, my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. He would, no, he's great to play with, just not my style. Right. And, you know, I needed to know what's the play, what are the rules, how do I adjust, let me do what I do. But, you know, doing it on the fly and not practicing it was really not my style. So it's just, you know, just one of those things. Two of the greatest Grey Cups, uh, this guy won with the Argos in 97 and the Rough Riders in 89. So we'll continue the CFL talk, plus any other things. Do you have any thoughts on um, Deshaun Watson? I haven't uh, been following it, to be honest well, with you. Well, but you're a sharp guy. I'll yeah. Get your take when we come back. I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Fairholm with us. We're live from Grey Eagle Resort and Casino, the event center. We'll be right back on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and you can always catch the podcast wherever the best podcasts are found, including Amazon, Google, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. 
A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Four. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Are you ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital GMC. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a GM-certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital GMC. Your adventure starts here. Capital Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. It's the hour. RP Show Hour 2, live from Great Eagle Resort and Casino. We are in the event center where the, all the action goes down in terms of the shows. Next week, we're going to be out in the rodeo arena, weather permitting. Cody Snyder's bull busting going on, and the entire city is buzzing about that as we work up towards the Calgary Stampede. By the way, Aaron B. is watching in Hamilton. He says, I don't get to watch much anymore. Is Rod still following the CPL? Cavalry are the top team in the league. Yes, I was at their game on Sunday when they slapped around Edmonton, had their way with them 3-1 as we bring in Jeff Farrell. What are you smiling about over there? Just how you, just how you slap them around. Yeah, they bit. did. It was so much fun. I went with Mike Abu Meshrik, another Rough Riders alumni, and his two kids. And I'll be honest with you, it's summertime. You feel like, or I do, that like there's not a lot going on, but you look around, there's a heck of a lot going on. There's Western Canadian Baseball League play all around Alberta, Saskatchewan. And this CPL... Talk about a best-kept secret, Jeff. Sold out over there at Atco Stadium at Spruce Meadows. Have you been? I have not. I'm not much of a soccer fan, so but I should go. I mean, I, 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 I would love to go. I just haven't been there yet. I wasn't either until I got out here, and here's the Cavalry saying, well, the first game was, here's some tickets. Would you like to come? And all of a sudden, I'm getting hooked. I'm, there's, I'm trying to be a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. So, yes, I'm following the Canadian Premier League to the amount that I can. Um, but we also talk CFL when we have a CFL Hall of Famer with us here. And John in Winnipeg watching says, interesting fact, 
Larry Fairholm played for the Alouettes, though like a lot of Canadian quarterbacks, Fairholm was converted to play defensive back in the 1960s. Is that a fact? Wow, you are right on. Actually, he was a quarterback uh, coming out of junior. He played. Uh, he won the um, the junior championship against the Hilltops, and he was a quarterback. And he went down to Arizona as a quarterback, and quickly was <laughs> very quickly was put to uh, defensive back, and came up to Canada in that way. Yeah, boy, great memory. There you go, John in Winnipeg. Your dad was he won how many great cups with Montreal? Just the one in 1970. Did he play with Joe Burrow's dad? Don't think so. Okay. Uh, well, the old timers that are watching, clearly they have all the facts. Joe Burrow, the quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, his dad played in the Alouettes too, but I didn't know if he would have played with your dad or not. Judging by Joe's age, I would say that he's probably after my dad. Okay. Yeah, because he's just a kid. Yeah. Right. Uh, by I'm the not. way, a sports update. I do want to throw this in here. The Blue Jays will be looking to complete a sweep of the Boston Red Sox when they send ace Alec Manoa to the mound against Canadian Nick Pavetta in tonight's series finale at Rogers Center. Junior hockey supremacy is on the line tonight in New Brunswick as the host St. John Sea Dogs of the Quebec Major Junior League face the OHL champion Hamilton Bulldogs. It is a 4 p.m. mountain faceoff, 7 p.m. Atlantic. And the NFL insisted on an indefinite suspension while Deshaun Watson's legal team argued there's no basis for that punishment as both sides presented their cases in front of a retired Delaware judge yesterday. Two sources have told the Associated Press. The hearing continues today. The Cleveland Browns quarterback has settled 20 of 24 civil lawsuits for sexual misconduct, but the NFL is seeking at least a one-year suspension for violating the league's personal conduct policy. This sports update for dubnetwork.ca, your number one source for Western Hockey League breaking news and analysis, and for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars. I'm simply asking Jeff this as a pro football alum. Where you stand on the Deshaun Watson situation, and I find it interesting here in Calgary, there's a lot of diehard NFL fans that don't even follow the CFL at all. There's a lot of diehard CFL fans that don't even follow the NFL at all. Where are you on the National Football League? I follow both. I mean, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy football, and, and they're very different. <clears throat> so I, I try to follow both. Uh, I watch more CFL for sure. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, a, I'm an NFL fan, CFL fan. I, I know enough to be dangerous. Right. Deshaun Watson, you were right saying in the break that this is very tricky. Ooh. Right? Yeah, it's very tricky. I mean, you know, the whole innocent until proven guilty thing uh, is, is something that's, you know, uh, that's important. Um, however, there is a code of conduct and, you know, the NFL will obviously have the right to do that. If, if they don't, then, you know, they'll, um, you know, they'll, they'll fight it. And, you know, Deshaun's uh, lawyers will fight it. I mean, I think the, uh, what's lost in all this or what's certainly underneath the, underneath it all is Baker Mayfield, you know, Deshaun Watson. I mean, Hey, where, there, where there's smoke, there's fire too, you know? So I'm mm-hmm. not really, I'm not really giving you an opinion. I'm just sort of spouting some things off the top of my head, but 24 counts. I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. I mean, you got to think some of those people are looking for money, maybe. But uh, at the same time, you know, come on, there's got to be something there. So I feel for Baker Mayfield more than anything. And, uh, you know, where's he going to go? How's he going to be? And, you know, is, will he go back to Cleveland and uh, be what he was in the past? We are a month away from the start of NFL training camps, and the Cleveland Browns don't know who their quarterback's going to be. So, I, you know, is Deshaun Watson going to be suspended? And if he is, Baker Mayfield said, I'm not playing for you anymore because they brought this guy in. So again, terrible owners. And as I said in my commentary yesterday, the fans think, well, they, they own an NFL team. They can't be this stupid. Actually, yes, they can. Well, they, I don't think they were, they've ever been accused of being super smart. I mean, the way that they no. play with the lives of these, of these guys, uh, and it's just the business. I mean, that's all it is. All they want to do is make money. And, and to do that, they think they know what they need to do. Um, Baker Mayfield, I'm a loyal guy. I'm a very I'm, loyalty is super important to me, and he was loyal to to them, and and that bridge I think has been burned, and I don't blame him for for wanting to walk away. Some bridges you just can't go back over. Uh, I apologize to Aaron B watching on YouTube. He says, "Why does Rod think I'm in Hamilton? I'm watching in Edmonton with a BC phone number." Right, not confusing <laughs> at all. So I apologize. You're a Western Canadian. Thank you. John Ohm in Winnipeg, Ohm has hit on something. He says the best father and son to play in the CFL, the Fairholmes. <laughs> Easy to say, but I can't think of a whole lot of others. How about uh, Mark and Ted Ernest? Not bad. Not bad. How about, um, did Mike Anderson's father play too? 
if I former can't, center if, of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. If I can't remember his name, then I, I guess that's We're not much of the case. We're all talking about uh, Saskatchewan here. My mind just jarred. I went, I went to Chris and Deron Carter, but that Chris never played in the CFL. No. So can you old-timers out there, old-time CFL fans, or even new-timers, tell me uh, who would be another of any father and son tandem to play in the Canadian Football League. That would be... Why do we have to limit it to players? How about Lonnie and Bernie Gleiberman? <laughs> you Why were not? in that era. I was. Why Kevin not? and Michael Federick. Were you living in Calgary in 2004 when no. they took over the Stampeders? No. What year did you move here? Uh, about 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. It's been great, hasn't it? I love Calgary. Yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, we moved in from, from Montreal uh, for business. And like I said to people, I wish I'd moved here you know, 20, 25 years ago. I love Calgary. What do you love about it? The people. Uh, people are fantastic. A little bit slower pace. Uh, <laughs> just driving. You know, I drove here today and I let somebody you know, with their blinker on, let them in, and they wave. Everybody waves. People are nice. I uh, love the stampede. Love the vibe. I uh, love the mountains. Uh, there's lots of things to, to love about Calgary. It was voted, I don't know if you saw, I would assume you heard, but the third, just last week, the third best city in the world mm. to live in by the econ- economic international scale. Number one was Vienna, Austria. Number two, Copenhagen, Denmark. And number three, Calgary, Alberta. Dave Mason's watching in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia on Game Plus TV. Just with regards to tonight's Memorial Cup final, Hamilton Bulldogs versus the host St. John Sea Dogs. Dave says, just to clarify, the Hamilton Memorial Cup wins. The Red Wings and Finn Cups were the same franchise. The Bulldogs relocated from Belleville. And that is for us hockey nerds that care about stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I do, but you know what I care about? Hmm. He's from Cape Breton. How do you say Cape Breton without talking about Cabot Cliffs and Cabot Links golf courses? Have you heard of those? No. You haven't heard of those? They're the best courses, in, the best courses in Canada. They're, uh, yeah, they're fantastic golf courses. And uh, they're on the, I think it's the, I don't even know what coast it's on, but it's right on the coast. It's our Pebble Beach. And if you haven't been there, man, you got to get out there and play some golf. It's, it's worth the trip. We have such a wonderful sports story in Canada. You know, and um, I was just in Estevan last month now for the Canadian National Junior A Hockey Championship, and Alan May was there, a longtime NHLer, and he played for the Estevan Bruins, so he came back for the Cup. And he said when he was in Cape Britain, that was the Oilers' farm team, and they were, he goes, we were called the Lobsters. The players were called the Lobsters. We called <laughs> up a lobster, the Oilers would say, in Edmonton. And uh, I'm interested... Do you identify yourself as an Easterner or a Westerner or neither? A Canadian. I'm Canadian. Right. But you came out to Moncton for Touchdown Atlantic. And did you work that in as a work trip or did you come specifically for Touchdown Atlantic? No, okay. no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? I did, have some, I did have some work out Wasn't there. that great? It was fantastic. I, it, it celebrates the CFL which in, in, in a whole different way. And the people were really into it. And I, I don't think I'll get there this year for the Saskatchewan-Toronto game. But uh, having it in, where is it, Marysville or Wolfville? Having it in Wolfville, I think, is going to be really interesting. And it gets a whole other part of the Maritimes involved in football. I think it's fantastic. Too bad that you couldn't go July 16th because that's your two former teams. And mm-hmm. you know how big of a party that's going to be. Uh, it's going to be a nice party there. Uh, they really get into it. The Maritimers are great people, and uh, they'll put on a show. It's uh, both teams, I think. I think it would be a good game, too, considering uh, where both teams are at right now. Well, now would be a good time to get into it. And I listen, a little later on, I'll get to your questions and viewer takeover. Uh, they want to talk hockey here today in late June, and I get it. <laughs> But because you were at, ah, John in Winnipeg says, Tiger Cats receiver Jalen Saunders and his dad, Walter. Fair and, again, it's not a long list. We're not talking Bobby Hull and Brett Hull here and uh, some of these. It's not a long list. I think the Fairhomes might have it. <laughs> but I wonder what your takeaways were from that touchdown Atlantic. Because here's mine briefly. When they talk about the Atlantic schooners, which they've been kicking around for now officially 40 years and nothing's happened. I found that the CFL didn't have a huge footprint in the Maritimes. Football does. Amateur football does. And the NFL is getting a bigger and bigger and bigger footprint. And they just, they're not dying for a CFL team. Without risk, there's no reward. And the owners are going to, it's definitely going to be a risky situation. Um, And 
having to build a stadium as well. It's going to be a, it's going to be quite a financial risk. But I think there is. I think that if you put it in the right spot, if they do their due diligence, which hopefully they're doing, uh, I I'm hopeful. I don't know because I'm not involved, but I'm hopeful that there will be a team within the next three years. Is a guess. A big guess, though, right? You're not sitting here nothing. with any inside information. No, or no inside. Like no, it's just a big, it's, it's just a gut feel. Well, the viewers know, this, especially the daily ones, that I'm loathe to talk about this. And I'm only asking because you've been out there and you're a CFL alum because, again, I said it's been 40 years we've been talking about it. We've had viewers that have said they've been talking about it 60 years. Wow. I just don't get really what the holdup is. I'm with you. Wonderful region. Now, how do you have a coast-to-coast league and ignore one coast? Uh, again, it comes down to risk, right? It's it, you got to mitigate that risk somehow. And and I wonder, I wonder too. I just thought about it. I wonder if playing the game in the summer is the right thing to do. Maybe if they played it in the early fall, you know, when people are back from vacations and schools back in, that they might get more people at the games. Um, you know, I wonder, I wonder about attendance all throughout the CFL, and I, I plead for people to go to football games, and it just seems that the, the summers, and, and then they've backed it up. You know, when I played, we didn't start training camp till mid-June or so. Um, but I think the summers are a tough time for everybody to, you know, to, to use their season tickets because it's vacation time, and now, now that COVID is quote-unquote over, uh, people are traveling, and it's hard to get people into the game. So I wonder, maybe if they did it in the early fall or something, that they might get more people and more interest in the Americans. But they do always sell it out whenever they have it. You know, this one's sold out already. Yeah, I don't so. think Moncton was sold out, though, Rod. I mean, I, it, there seemed to be a few. Maybe it was sold out, but maybe there were the bums it in the seats. It could have been run better okay. overall because uh, it was a wonderful spectacle. It was great. Right? Yeah, yeah, we were both there for it, Alouettes and Argonauts. And while we have Jeff here, uh, JT watching on YouTube says this conversation between Rod and Jeff smooth. I appreciate that. We work well together, <laughs> but while you're here um, and I, if you don't mind, I'll have you stay for one more segment. We've got two minutes here, but Moose DuPont and I were talking about this the other day where the NHL and the NFL went in the eighties and nineties and the CFL just stayed here. He's financially he hasn't grown, still hasn't grown. He said, Missed the, missed the chance in the 90s to continue with the U.S. experiment because you had double the amount of teams, you had all those American markets. You played in it. You were right in the breadbasket of that era. Mm-hmm. Did you, do you have fond memories of that or bad memories of that? All fond. Um, there were some issues <laughs> in Shreveport, Louisiana. That I, oh, my God, it was so hot down there. But anyway, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. It gave you a different place to go. Um, the only ball I ever remember dropping was in Sacramento. <laughs> and but they're you know playing in different stadiums having um you know different fans there and it was weird you know like playing in memphis i think it was where the field wasn't big enough so they they had grass and then they added some astroturf on the outside so it's almost like you need to a little haphazard yeah. yeah you run it you run an out route and you want to change your change your shoes for the for the different turf but uh i enjoyed it it was a lot of fun you know with baltimore and san antonio it was a riot great road trips eh Oh, yeah, we had fun. It was, you know, instead of going to, no offense to Edmonton, and instead of going to Edmonton four times, you get a chance to, to travel the States a little bit and actually get on some charter jets, which was fun. <laughs> when we, I think we've stumbled upon something we need to dig into a little more. Two-time Grey Cup champion and Hall of Famer Jeff Fairholm is with us, and we will uh, bring the viewers in more when we return. You're watching live from Grey Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus Television. We're also live streaming on YouTube, and we stream sports uh, talk radio 24-7, streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. 
Play Among Legends at betregal.net. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Ready? It's finally time for your next adventure, and it starts at Capital Ford. Custom order the perfect new vehicle for you, or reserve one of the hundreds that's already built and on its way. Can't wait? Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to rock. Plus, the American Export event is back and bigger than ever. We'll send your vehicle south, making you the most money for your trade. Guaranteed. Oh, and for a limited time, all name brand tires are employee priced. Only at Capital Ford Lincoln. Your adventure starts here. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Another segment with Hall of Famer Jeff Fairholm, and our viewers are in, are enjoying it. John in Winnipeg, this great conversation with Jeff, big fan of number 18. Regarding uh, the Atlantic schooners ever happening, Don, our Navy friend who spent a lot of time in the Maritimes, I think St. John is where the port is there. Don, am I correct? He says the stadium, lack of it, and Maritimers hate risk. He would know, uh, as do farmers. That's the one thing I've... You must have seen a similarity between Maritimers and Prairie people when you were out there. Yeah. Same. Very similar. Great people. I mean, that's, right. that's how you say it. Great people, very welcoming, uh, sit in a bar, and you know everybody all of a sudden. It's fantastic. Yes. Um, hey, one thing I want to say to Jeff, because he was at the golf tournament that I uh, emceed, did the show from, you all watched it last week, right? From Bear's Paw. You were there when I singled out Bo Levi Mitchell at the supper, were you not? Were you still there? I was. Didn't you think that was nice of me to do? I think it was very nice of you. <laughs> Did you see how uncomfortable he got? Sooner or later, you guys will make friends. I'm <laughs> life's, trying, man. Life's too short. I don't know what else to do. But, oh, he turned as red as a lobster, if I may, when I singled him out. I was ki- trying to kill him with kindness, and he survived. And it was a fun time. But back to that uh, CFL thing. Oh, Don says Halifax is the Navy base. My bad. I apologize. Uh, yeah. So, John in Edmonton, another John. This ties right in with what we're saying. He said, why does the CFL want to forget the seasons that they had American teams? One of them even won the Grey Cup. He brings up a great point because I used to talk about that era so lovingly, and I was working in the league. It was fun, and I was also a fan. Like I remember when the Sacramento Gold Miners came to town, you guys set an attendance record. Yep. 33,000 plus. There was a buzz in the city that David Archer and the Gold Miners were coming. It was new. It was exciting. And the CFL, when I was working in it, the head office said, Rod, don't talk as much about that era. We're trying to, we're embarrassed about that. I'm like, why? It was so much fun. But if you go and read Ed Willis's book, which have you? No, I haven't, but End I should pick it up. Zones and Border Wars. Yeah, go like, to chapters yeah. and get it or Ed, order it. That's a great writer. It's the best chronicle of that period of time. But do you just think had they continued it? What, could, could you imagine if they continued it? 
what we'd have had right now as a league. It would have been fun. I mean, yeah. you know, they're, they're, and they're still trying to put football other than the NFL in the States. I mean, the USFL, I mean, I haven't watched a game. I'm not interested in it. But, you know, they're, they're still trying to do stuff in the States other than the NFL. And I think, I don't know. You don't know all the financials and the business part of it, but, man, it would have been a riot to have, you know, 15, 20 teams in the CFL. Well, Darren DuPont said this, and he's more of the business whiz than I am. But he said, had the CFL stayed on that path, you own the name. It was the Canadian Football League with half the league being in the States, and nobody seemed to have a problem with that, if you recall, right? I didn't have a problem, and I, if I remember right, they didn't have to play with the ratio they didn't. either. Yeah, so they didn't have to have Canadians, so, and it was still very competitive. The results, trust me, I've gone into this. The one loss record between the American teams and the Canadian teams was about 500. Yeah. It was about 50-50. Uh, but Darren said, had they stayed on that path, they would have owned pro football on the continent. NFL is fine staying All-American. But he said they would have had both c- countries, right? And he's right on that. Could be. And the other thing where I'd like to see them move forward with this, which I don't think is going to happen because of the fight with the XFL. Remember how, where were you on the XFL talks? Did we talk about that? You we I? didn't. But I, you know, I didn't really follow it. I was, you know, I was hoping that it didn't happen only because I wanted the Canadian League to not lose its identity. Uh, if they merge with another league, I think the CFL will eventually get, get pushed aside. But I think if it's the CFL that expands into the States and they can keep that CFL, I think it would live. Yeah, that's a big list of conditions almost. Oh, of course. <laughs> no, but I think if we could have stayed like... It was with the 90s. I think we would have really had something. And I guess my point with the USFL, I watched the first week, and it was good football. I haven't watched it since because, as you pointed out earlier, there are so many options in sports. Or with Netflix and movies. Shoot, we went to Elvis last night. Went to Top Gun last week. There's so many options of that. But what I am, if I may say a football guy, is a guy that worked in the league forever. It's more jobs for players and coaches and scouts and trainers, that broadcasters. That's what I like to see. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jim Pop got a got a job there, right? And so um, we, the, the industry of football needs guys like Jim Pop, you know, working. And so he got a job. And you know, my one of you know somebody from my alma mater, a Scooby Wright, uh, got to play. And you know, these guys, if they don't get to play in in the, in the NFL or the CFL, why not? I mean, you know, if, as long as they're getting paid and they're able to do a job for as long as they can, go for it. Week four. In the Canadian Football League kicks off Thursday night. And in our last couple of minutes with Jeff here, uh, I just want your, just pick a winner. Nobody's going to hold your feet to the fire or even remember what you picked. <laughs> I'll just say. Who's playing? I don't remember. Well, I'm going to tell you. Okay. Thursday, Nathan Rourke and the BC Lions are at Ottawa. BC's favored by two and a half. Who do you think wins the game? Ottawa. I said the same. DuPont's picking Nathan Rourke and the Lions. Friday night, it is a battle of winless teams in Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. 0-3 Edmonton at 0-3 Hamilton. Who do you like? Hamilton. Saturday, it is the back end of a home-and-home. Montreal Alouettes at the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Riders favored by five. They got spanked 37-13 at Montreal last week. What do you think happens in that one? Uh, Riders are definitely going to rebound. It's going to be a good game, but the Riders are going to win. Should be fun. And then Monday, it is the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at the Toronto Argonauts. The Blue Bombers are favored by five at BMO Field. What's going to happen there, do you think? Could be the best game of the week. And I'm going to go with Toronto. I think they're going to beat Winnipeg. Did you hear that, folks? How about That's that? the upset special from Jeff Fairholm. What makes you say that? They're a good team. And, you know, I don't think, you know, flying to BC, I think that's an anomaly. It's a tough road trip for them. They're playing, got to think about what time they're playing. And um, I think they're a super good team. And I think Winnipeg is is ripe for the picking right now. Wow. Well, now you really got me tuned in for that one because uh, I've got Winnipeg as the best team in the CFL. 3-0 and and almost, uh, as far as I'm concerned, unchallenged so far. Jeff, always fun talking ball with you. Appreciate it. Love it, Rod. Anytime. Happy All right. to be here. Hall of Famer Jeff Fairholm. He's got a lot of great opinions on Twitter. Give him a follow there at Slotback18. It is a Taco Time viewer takeover when we come back. You're watching the RP Show live from Grey Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus TV. YouTube Live, and you can always check the podcast wherever you enjoy your podcasts, including Amazon, Google, Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. 
experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services, and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. owners and marketers okay we know you think we're pretty cool that's why we want you to share in the coolness factor partner with the rod peterson show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities tell the world about your business yes the world thanks to game plus tv and the rod peterson digital network contact us today and find out how you can be a part of canada's fastest growing sports talk show the rod peterson show All right, welcome back to the RP Show, everybody. It is Taco Time Viewer Takeover, where we talk about what you want to talk about, and everybody seems to like that real a lot. How about that? We got yeah. the moose back with us. Taco Time, real food, real value, real flavor. It is the final segment here from uh, Gray Eagle Event Center, and uh, the moose is back with us. And how have you been? I've been great. Yeah. Yeah. You like when these guests drop by, right? Of course. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It gets a little, keeps the show moving, keeps it fresh, uh, and gives me a chance to do some business, but then make sure I still get some time on the show. What's funny, so when you roll in here, you have no idea what the topics have been. Zero. Right. So we were talking about Deshaun Watson, and uh, Frank Limaker is watching up here in Airdrie on Game Plus TV, and... <laughs> fairway here disappointed me a little bit because oh. you know he comes with the fire all the time today he didn't okay i'm like deshaun watson what should happen he's like eh, i see both sides i'm like what about live golf eh, i feel i see both sides but that's why you had me on this show <laughs> yeah, you can do <laughs> you that. already get that you can sit on the fence as well as anybody exactly anyways i said we're a month away from training camp we don't know yet what's going to happen for deshaun watson and his suspension with the cleveland browns but we're supposed to know today and let's just say he gets suspended for a year because that's what the NFL has 
has recommended to their own chief disciplinarian. It is complicated, and it's a sticky situation for sure. Yeah. Sue Robinson is the name. She's a, rep- a retired, I believe, grand jury judge. She's handling this, and she's getting both sides and everything. Frank and Airdrie says Cleveland Browns have stated that Jacoby Brissett will be the starter if Watson can't play this season. And if I saw that, I missed it. I know they signed him, and he was in, uh, my, I say, Florida. He was in Miami last year. I watched him. He wasn't very good for the Dolphins at all. So they're in trouble. They're in big trouble. Yeah. And they're a, they're a team that's supposed to be peaking. It's supposed to be rising and becoming a Super Bowl contender. Um, they won't be without Deshaun Watson. And Baker Mayfield was asked about that just recently and if it could be repaired. And, you know, if Deshaun gets suspended, could he see himself going back as the quarterback? And he basically said no. And he said, you know, I think we've both moved on. I think it's better. I think I'm just waiting for my trade, waiting to see what team I'm going to get traded to. So he thinks it's inevitable. But he did say if it was going to happen, it, it's the other side. The Browns have to start the conversation. They have to make the approach. It'll have to Good come. for him. He said it'll have to come from them. They'll have to make the first move. So that's interesting. And that's a kind of a life lesson, but uh, it's a fun situation. Life to lesson for whom? The Browns? For everybody. <laughs> right? Yeah. By, on repairing damaged relationships. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're the person who's, who's been hurt, you don't want, you're not going to make the first move. And you shouldn't have to. Right? It should be the Cleveland Browns. They now want Baker more than Baker wants them. So they're going to have wow. to do the work to make it happen. What do they say? Who has the power? And in this case, Baker Mayfield has the power. Yes. So to the father and son tandem, and this is great. Probably what's really great is the amount of Stampeder fans that are watching the show now. I really appreciate that. Dougal Cameron here in Calgary says, CFL father-son combo, Wayne Harris Sr. and Jr. How about that? He says both were Stampeders. We have a Stamps alum right here in the house. Nodding his head like a bobblehead. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, there's quite a few here, actually, he's written in. He said, how about uh, the Lumsdens? And with all due apologies to the Fairhomes, I think that trumps all. Neil Lumsden is a Hall of Famer. He's a former CBC color guy, right? And then your boy, Jesse, who you just talked to the other day. Maybe this needs to go to a poll. This might need to go to a poll. Who's the most famous father and son tandem? And Jeff goes on to say Orville Lee and son TJ Lee, which if, if we're talking about accomplishments, it begins and ends with the Lumsdens. Orville Lee and TJ Lee, while a father and son combo, it ain't Bobby Hull and Brett Hull level. He says no. Thomas Ram and son TJ Ram. This is all coming from... Jeff, the Stamps fan. He's dialed in. Yeah. He says Larry Highbaugh and grandson Trey Roberson. Did we know that was a thing? (laughs) He says the Forzanis. So I guess I brought up, I was in the wrong town to bring up father and son. These are all Stampeders. And then you probably brought it up, maybe not, but the Philpots will, will be next, right? They already are. They're just starting their careers. But I think both, you look at two sons, Jalen and Tyson, both now starting to see the ball a little bit, but they're just getting their feet wet. Let's give them a year or two or three, and they might, I don't want to say past the Lumsdens, but they might be right there. I'm listening to you. Yeah. Tim Hunter? Well, we're talking CFL. (laughs) (laughs) This is Lee sitting over here. It's awesome. This is just strictly CFL. Uh, Earl James watching on YouTube says, the Browns should be fined heavily. They knew Watson was going to have huge problems, so they gave him huge guarantees to help to pay. Not cool. Oh, like, again, that's the ownership. People think, oh, they own an NFL team. They must be smart. Nope. And I don't know where the Haslam's got their money. I have no idea, but just idiotic move by them. Yeah, it was short-sighted. And <laughs> What due diligence was done? Well, even if your due diligence was done, you thought these were settled and you didn't know about the new cases and maybe there was no way to know about the new cases, you still need to give it time to settle down. But that, as it happens, when Deshaun Watson's on the market, he wasn't going back to Houston. 
they had kind of moved on. So you come in this position of chicken. And it's like, well, if we want them, we better get them now. Because if we don't, right? And you know what? If it doesn't work out and he has to sit a year, but he comes back a year from now and plays well and is the all-star pro bowler Deshaun Watson that they thought they were getting and gets them towards Super Bowl, they'll be happy. They'll be fine taking yeah. this year. It is a sticky situation, as I said. And, uh, you know, Jeff asked me, he goes, has he been charged at all? And I said, no. Two grand jury judges in separate incidents have said we're not pursuing uh, criminal charges on this. Yeah. So it's all civil cases. And again, we're not lawyers. Janelle is watching in Saskatoon. She says, love seeing my favorite boys smiling. You guys are awesome. As are you, Janelle, and I appreciate it. And it's so darn much fun. And with her saying that, it just reminds me, I got football buddies in Houston. You met them when you were there. A lot. I could make one phone call and say, what's going on with Deshaun? Because none of this came out with these women coming forward until he said he wanted to be traded from the Texans. Let's just think about that for a second. Coincidence? There are those that say there are no coincidences. Everything was fine when he was the quarterback of the Houston Texans. The day he says, I want out of here via trade, an avalanche of this comes forth. You can't tell me there's not something behind that. And maybe my guys would know, or maybe they wouldn't know. But my guess is I would call them and they would say, uh, I don't want to talk about it. They'd know, but they wouldn't want to talk about it. Not on this phone line. <laughs> <laughs> call me on a secure uh, line. It's like these CFL coaches that call me. Call me because I can't text or email you. My emails are being monitored. That happens. I believe it. By the Spicy. team. By the team president. Okay. Jack in Vulcan, Alberta says, I believe that the Philpots will be the greatest fu- last minute of play in the RP show. Last minute of play. Jack says, I believe that the Phil Potts will be the greatest father-son duo to ever play in CFL history. Just, just give the boys a little time. When they introduced Jalen at the Stamps game the other day, though, it was a, wasn't even a smattering of applause. No, there wasn't. And it's too bad. Maybe they didn't make as big of a deal about it or whatnot, but... You know, he made his first catch, and, you know, that was great to see. Um, we saw Tyson do some stuff with the Owls. But, yeah, they're going to get their time. They're both they're so athletically gifted that just in time they're going to be stars. Funny how uh, things come up on this show that we did not plan for them to come up. We're not talking brother combos, the floaties. Nelson writes in, we're talking fathers. See, you have to stay with us and not come in late. We'll see you all tomorrow. Ella Lee did, but you're good. Uh, Farhan, thank you. Jeff Farron, we'll see the rest of you tomorrow at noon Eastern. Who has more fun than us? <laughs> Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Dundee, soul, bingo, hoorah, hell yes. <laughs>